Hey, God bless you. I um, just want to share a couple of dreams, um, some words, and a vision. Um, the first dream I'd like to share is one that's pretty encouraging. In this dream, I was... I was in a heavenly place or... Or I was on um I was on earth but in a glorified body, perhaps. It could have been uh, a comeback dream, um, a dream of the time when we come back to help during the tribulation, or it could have been during the millennium. I'm not sure exactly. I only sh- saw um, just a, a glimpse. But um, I was with someone who who watches this channel. His name's Jeff. And, um, and we were in our glorified bodies. And we were walking up a hill and I was standing next to what I knew to be my horse. It was white, um, but it had a unicorn horn. It was a, it was a unicorn. And we were walking in this, um, like grassy area and we wanted to go up to a heavenly realm. So we knew that in order to get to the heavenly realm, we wanted to get to, we had to go up six flights of stairs so as we walked toward the hill we um, we simply just thought in our minds for stairs to appear and they appeared and we walked up them I think it was six flights because we were probably going to the seventh heaven and that would require six flights of stairs and um, what was really cool, though, was was the ability just to think things into being. It took, like, no work to do anything. Everything came very easily. And we were each dressed in, like, um, like these white fur vests. with, um, it's hard to describe, it'd be like, like maybe something Native Americans would wear, you know, a long time ago. It was like warrior outfits. So that's what makes me think it could have been partially a comeback dream because I've had, I've had some dreams where, you know, after the rapture, I've come back with a glorified body to help, you know, during the tribulation. I'm, I'm more like a warrior at that point. And, um, you know, I'm able to go back and forth between the heavenly realms and the earth. Um, let's see, the next, the next dream I wanted to share was one from, uh, one from last night. And in this dream, there was a big flood and my car was my car was on the street and it was being flooded so someone went down to help move my car they moved it and then I went down to get into my car to go somewhere and when I got in the car was very hot and I turned it on and it exploded the engine the engine exploded and I noticed that the temperature gauge was at 1900 and I knew that it was supposed to be at a maximum of 900 
But when the person moved it out of the, the flood, they, they pushed the gas too much. They pushed the car too far. They pushed it to 1,900 instead of 900. So when I turned it on, it exploded. The interpretation, I believe, here's what I, I felt in my spirit, that the numbers I was to pay attention to were 9 and 19. 9 and 19. So I looked those up. And uh, 9 refers to a place in Damascus place in Damascus and 19 has uh, one meaning of it is um, I think it's like I have to look it up again but it's something good it's like grace or or uh, or or it's goodness I think it's goodness is one of the meanings and the other meaning is slaughter And so I'm wondering if the, the dream meant that um, as the flood comes, as uh, the world gets more chaotic, um, particularly in the Middle East is what I was feeling, that as things get more chaotic in the Middle East, in order to solve the problem, in order to move the car out of the flood Israel will attack Damascus but they won't they won't simply stop at 9 they're going to push to 19 they're going to go they're going to go further and um, it's going to cause total destruction of Damascus it's going to cause a slaughter it's going to kick off all the events that lead to slaughter in this world but at that time God will show us his goodness and will be removed will be removed from this earth will escape the slaughter That was kind of my interpretation. That's what I was feeling. The um, the word I wanted to share, I was given last night, and I did write it down, and it came with a vision. Um, but it would be hard for me to pull it up right now, so I'm just going to try to remember it the best I can. I'm sure I'll get pretty close. So, so I heard, I heard, um, to write, write these words down. So I did. And, um, actually, let me see if I can pull it up because I don't want to forget it or get it wrong. So it says, write these words they're faithful and true. The devil comes down to you with great fur fury. My children are protected under my wing. Even in the storm, I am there. Hell expands herself for the great many souls who choose her. The time is coming and now is here when no one will stand on the fence. There are no gray areas. All will stand with me and I can't see the rest, but I know the rest says, or against me. And it says, I am not a God to be trifled with. And it says, make your choice for I am coming now. And uh, when I got this word, I saw a vision of hell. And um, it was like this. Or maybe it was maybe it would be Hades, but I think it was hell. 
I think those two places are slightly different. But anyway, it was like a cavernous place, and I knew it was in the earth. And it was filled with fire, and I could see the lake of fire. I was even allowed to go down into the lake of fire, and I saw people under there, like, drowning in the lake of fire. And I could see people being uh, tortured by, like, demonic demonic entities and it was the place was filled with screams and terror and and pain um just such an awful place just encourage you to to get off of the fence if you're if you're on the fence if you're in the middle that's going to be taken away and you're going to have to make a choice. You're going to choose Christ and if it's before the rapture and you really give your life to him, then, you know, I pray that you'll be raptured. But but if it's after, then you ha- you'll have to give up your life. He says those who... Who lose their lives will gain eternal life. You'll have to lose your life to gain eternal life in that time. Or you'll take the mark of the beast and you'll be eternally damned. There's not going to be a middle ground. The middle ground will be taken away and the time's upon us. So I don't usually... um, I don't usually give the gospel because I just make the assumption that most people who watch this channel are already following Christ. But in case you're not, Jesus came to the earth and he died for your sins. He took every sin that you ever committed upon himself and he died in your place so that you could have the right to become a son or daughter of God. So that the gap between you and God could be bridged. And you could have a relationship with Him. And you could spend eternity in His presence. He died to put everything right again. The original sin in the garden and everything that it brought, Jesus died to put all of that right again. To bring redemption for you. And if the only one who would be saved by his sacrifice were you, he would have still done it. He would have done it because he loves you. And he wants you to be his child. And he wants you to spend eternity with him. He doesn't want you to be cut off from him for eternity. He doesn't want you to go to hell. Hell was made for the devil and his angels. But you can choose to go there. And a great many will make that choice. The Bible says that the road is wide to destruction. It says the path to life is narrow and few will find it. But he wants you to be one of those few. And all you have to do is give him your life, is submit your life to him and accept the free gift that he died to give you. If you're willing right now, just go to your knees and say, Father, I know I'm a sinner. I know that I haven't done things 
just right and according to your will. I know that I've lived in rebellion to you. And God, I'm sorry. I give you my life from this day forward. I want to be your child. I want your sacrifice. I want redemption. God, come into my life and transform me. I submit to you. I give it all to you. Whatever you want, God, I am yours from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. If you meant that with your heart, God is going to come into your life and, and transform you. And you'll be born again. Acts chapter 2 says, Repent and be baptized and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So you've now repented. Baptism can be as simple as filling up your bathtub and going before God and laying yourself in it as if you're laying in the death of Christ and rising up as if you're rising in his resurrection. Or if you'd rather, you can go to a church and, and be baptized. It's up to you doesn't need to be a big show. It's between you and God. And then, uh, as the Bible says, you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is God indwelling in you to transform you. So God bless you, and um, I hope to see you all soon. If not here, then in the air. Bye.